everyone standing. Christmas Day worship to 9.30. I think your bulletin says 9 o'clock. So 9.30 on the 25th. Christmas Day service at 9.30. Let the church say 9.30. 9.30. Right. Also on next Sunday, I know it's a busy Sunday, uh, we have our Bible enrichment there uh, presentations, but I also want to meet with all of our young people, our children, our youth at 9.15, at 9.15 next Sunday, particularly those Praise A Award recipients. I want to meet with some parents. I need you to make sure they are here and they're here on time. Somebody say amen. 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 I, I, I really don't want, I, I don't want a lazy church. Amen. Amen. And so we can be on time everywhere else. Amen. So let's work on being on time. Amen. In the house of God. Amen. You do that for me, please, sir. Please, ma'am, uh, make your way here. So I want to bring those two things your attention. We have with us one of our sons in the ministry and the person and personality of Reverend Steve Weaver <laughs> worshiping with us today. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we're praying for him. Amen. Of course, we know of the transition of his wife and so on. Uh, uh, it's a struggle for him, Amen. And, but God will see him through. Yes. Amen. 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 And so uh, I'm going to allow him to come. He wants to make a statement. He's going to share a few words right now. Amen. Church, I just want to say thank you so much. I can get the mic on. For your loving kindness and your mercy toward me. How you showed how awesome the body of Christ is. Yes. That you were there to meet the needs of your brother and your sister. It meant so much to me. And I just wanted to come back and tell you thank you so much. May God bless you on the inside and bless you on the outside too. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. up in the balcony. Did I see Sister Winbish? See Janice? Is she here? Amen. Right there. Yes. And she laid to rest her husband on Friday. Here and the family's here. And Marie, all the rest of them are all here. And um, uh, 
I salute you today because we don't have a faith that we just talk about we have a faith that we demonstrate amen Man, and so our instructions tells us that when we are weak then are we strong I mean though when you think you can't stand when the God in you will stand in you and stand you up prop you up and keep you up and so we, we pray with them and we pray for them uh, as they certainly have their days they have their moments we want them to know they can lean on us amen, amen. amen. in these times so I think that's all of the information I want to bring before you let's go to the word of God I won't be before you long today amen struggling with a little something and so you pray me through I dare I dare not stay home on the last communion of the year amen God's been too good amen yes praise God amen and so um, yes um, Reverend Kenner is here uh, his mother transition will get that information uh, this week we'll let you know and he's here she transitioned on Friday Thursday on Thursday she went to be with the Lord on Thursday he's here today amen you probably have no idea what that says to heaven amen amen and for us to continue to do what God has assigned us to do even in the midst of things that happen along the way uh, that that means much to to God to heaven and to our faith those of you who have your Bibles turn with me to Luke chapter 1 audio visual ministry I want to back up to verse 30 43 43 if you will you do that I wanted to start at 46 I want to start at 43 verse 43 chapter 1 Luke's gospel if you're with me say amen amen, amen. if y'all just back up a few verses up there if you can if not they have their word in front of them thank you so very much reading from the New International Version of the Bible it says but but why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Mary said, my soul glorifies or my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generations to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. Somebody say, that's me. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servants, Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and the descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. Mary, and then go on, Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. I want to preach and share with us just for a moment from these verses. Amen. Somebody ought to sing. 
This is Mary's song. What's your song? Somebody ought to sing. Father, bless your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. How many of you know during this season we have something to share with the world? And it's the song that Mary sang about her own experience. Advent is a time to celebrate something coming. It is the retelling of the Christmas story. We come every Sunday, we come every Sunday, y'all. We come to rehearse this nativity scene. We come to rehearse the advent, the coming of something, the coming of joy, the coming of hope, the coming of peace, the coming of love. Let me know that the truth be told, all Christmas stories have their origin and genesis from this original Christmas story. Christmas presents different things to different people. That's why there has been and will continue to be a smorgasbord of movies, plays, and reenactment of the Christmas story. Christmas is the time of the year for movies and TV specials. Everything from It's a Wonderful Life to Elf, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, to A Christmas Story, to The Miracle on 34th Street, It's a Wonderful Life, Amen, James Stewart and all of that, and, and the letter from, from Santa Claus by Mark Twain, Scrooge, the preacher's wife, the best man holiday. I, I'm going to get there. Y'all just wait on me. I'm, com I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Horror movies, Black Christmas, Bad Santa, Gremlins, Trading Places, Rudolph the Red Nose, Reindeer, Special Christmas, Amen. And, and, and the true meaning of Christmas, all, all of that. And then there is my favorite. Lionel recites scripture from the book of Luke to explain what Christmas is all about in a Charlie Brown Christmas. Somebody say amen. But church, interesting, interesting enough, some of these stories have played and they have aired on TV repeatedly for years over and over and over and over again and some of us never get tired or grow weary of watching them. But while they are all great stories, they are not the story. Amen. I said they're great stories, but they are not the the story because in the midst of all of the modern and classic christmas stories we have the original story the one that gave birth to all of the other past stories and stories to come isn't it interesting isn't it interesting people who don't believe in god will write a play and a story amen that resembles and and connects to the real Christmas story. Advent, y'all, is, is, is focusing on what is coming. Mary, a very significant player in, in the story, the Christmas story, the, the nativity, the birth of Christ. How many you know that she had to be on board with everything that was about to happen? Someone who, 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 who would now have a love for that which she was going to give birth to. She was going to give birth to something that was going to change the world. And she had to be on board with it, y'all. So she sings, y'all. She sings about a love relationship that changed, first of all, her life. How I many of you know that you can't change anybody else's life if your life hasn't been changed? You can't tell anybody to change their life if your life has not been changed. So she sings a, a song here. It's a song of joy. Let the church say joy. The song of joy in verses 44 and 45 that says, As soon as she heard the salutation, she said, The baby leaped in her womb for joy. 
Somebody say, even then. Amen. Jesus was praising and giving praise to God while he was in the womb. How many of you know that Jesus loves to be talked about? <laughs> That's why they were talking about him. And, and while they were talking about him, he leaped in her womb. How many know that the same Jesus, he leaps every time we exalt him? <laughs> I wish I had a witness here. Every time we share his name, he leaps, y'all. Every time we, we mention him, we lift him up, he, he leaps. He, he's leaping in Mary. His leaping in Mary was because he was soon to give birth to what they had been talking about. I wish I had a witness in here. That how many of you know that every now and then if you talk about the right stuff, Amen. I said, you talk about the right stuff. He will leap and help you give birth to that which you are talking about. I wish I had two or three witnesses up in here. Amen. They recognize that he'll leap on your behalf. Amen. If you learn how to talk about the right stuff. And when you talk about the right stuff, make sure you engage the name of Jesus or something that's related to him. Because he loved for people to talk about him. It's a song of joy. Joy. It's a song of joy. Here it is. Verse 46. Oh, magnify the Lord, she says, and my spirit rejoiced in God. Church, the, that word magnify means to enlarge. Let the church say enlarge. It means to enlarge. Well, what do we enlarge? We enlarge him. Amen. Uh, to live your life in a way that makes God's love for the world even bigger. And so you got to make sure that whatever you do, that he's more obvious to people who come into your sphere, into your circle. You've got to enlarge him, magnify him. You're not the center of attraction. Amen. Especially this season in, in December, you're not the center of attraction. Your Christmas tree is not the center of attraction. The gifts that you're going to receive, they are not the center of attraction. But the center of attraction is Jesus, the baby that was born in Bethlehem. And it's our responsibility to have a song of joy so that we might enlarge him. Do I have a witness? So that a world might recognize that Jesus came into the world to save, amen, people like you and me. We've got to enlarge him. You, you've got to enlarge him, amen. You, you, you know about that. You know about that. And so to love God is to magnify God. I said to love him is to magnify God. And to, ma to magnify him, watch this, is to expose him. You can't run around keeping the God, amen, that saved you, that blessed you, keeping him hid. You've got to expose him. Help me somebody. So when somebody asks you, amen, how'd you make it? You tell them. You expose him. You expose him, saying, amen, had nothing to do with my intellect, had nothing to do with, amen, the people I know here on earth, but it had everything to do with a God. Help me, somebody. That sent his son to be born in a manger. Enlarge him. Enlarge him. Enlarge him. Tell people, amen, God did it. Tell them, whatever happens, wherever you are, whatever you're wearing, whatever you're driving, wherever you're living, whatever you're eating, you tell them, God, do it. amen, enlarge him. You've got to learn how to enlarge him. That had not been for God on in my life. And so, so much so that every step of the, of the uh, amen, every step you take, every moment of the day, sir, something ought to come out of your mouth related to what God has done in your life. Are y'all with me here? I'm not trying to preach long, but amen, when I think about all God has done for me. And, and, and how far he's brought me. I've got to enlarge him, Brother Ray. I've got to let people know, amen, the God that I serve has done wonderful and mighty things for me. Things that I didn't even ask him to do. Things that I couldn't even imagine that he would do for just little old me. I've got to enlarge him. 
Do I have a witness? I can't take the credit for anything. Help me somebody. But God did it. And so enlarge him. Magnify him. Oh, magnify the Lord. And let us. How long? Together. Amen. Together. Let's do it together. So that's what we come every Sunday. We come to magnify him. We come to enlarge him. We come to make him bigger than life. That's, what, that's, all, that's the song that Mary was singing. She says, my soul magnifies him. Now, to magnify him is to expose him, but not in a negative way. Expose the very nature of God. His nature is love and kindness, all those things. To bring the light or to reveal to those who see him as a great man and not as a savior, you've got to enlarge him, expose him. To, amen. To choose to magnify God, especially in times when we are asked to respond, amen, to these challenging times that we live in, these are the times that we enlarge him. Amen. When, when, when people say you can't, amen, enlarge him because God says you can Help me. When, when, when people say times are going to get bad, enlarge him. My God is able to supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Do I have a witness here? Amen. When the doctor says, listen, we don't know what we're going to do. We don't know if we have a cure for your situation. Enlarge him. Tell him all sickness is not under death. I wish I had a witness here. You've got to learn how to enlarge him when life is trying to help you lose your cause you to lose your mind you tell them that i know a mind regulator <laughs> when the world tries to break your heart you tell them i know a heart enlarge him we got to get savvy and we got to have a comeback but whatever the world throws at us that might be negative, we've got to have a positive response that enlarges our God. My God. My God. Somebody here knows, amen, that he can take nothing. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. He got somebody here that on Friday, Friday, when you got your check, you thought it was going to be one thing and it turned out to be something else. You, you were short on Monday. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? And thought Friday was going to make up the difference and you're still short on Friday? Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because when the next Monday came, you were, you were able, you made it. You didn't miss a meal. Do I have a witness here? Everything was provided. Why? Because, amen, learn how to enlarge him. That God is able to do anything but fail. I can, I can. Praise God. I, amen. And so let me help somebody because Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord. Amen. I, I've never seen a soul magnify the Lord. And so literally what, Mo, what, what Mary was saying, that, that magnification or enlargement does not, amen, it generates in the soul, but it comes out of your mouth. You, 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 you've got the magnifying with your mouth. I would say maybe I'll talk to this side over here. Let me just help you. Some of y'all come to church every Sunday and never say a word. You don't open your mouth. Do I have a witness here? Amen. Amen. You ain't got to say it like I say it, but just something ought to come out your mouth. <laughs> I said something ought to come out your mouth. Amen. If, you know, if, it, if it ain't hallelujah, you ought to say thank you, Lord. Because I know he's done enough in your life <laughs> for you to say thank you. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? Amen. You ought to, in fact, you ought to say thank you. Amen. So much so that the person sitting by next to you ought to say you're welcome. <laughs> Amen. They ought to think you talking to them. Do I have a witness here? Amen. You ought to thank God for what God has done for you. My soul magnifies. Thank you. 
I can't thank him enough. That's all, Mo that's all Mary was saying. She said in a few verses earlier, why? How is it that you favored me? And so since you favored me, my soul magnifies. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah. My spirit rejoices because you chose me. Ah, God. God, God. Look, listen, listen, listen. And so, so, so Mary, every year, every year, y'all, we talk about this passage of scripture, the, the magnificent. It's a passage of scripture that tells how Mary responded to the unexpected and, and confusing news that she was pregnant. Mary expressed what she felt in her heart. And that's all God asked us to do, express what you feel in your heart. Amen. And she literally mouths that expression. And she shares with us, amen. Another reason she has joy is, watch this, she mentions what God has done specifically for her. In verses 48 and 49, he says uh, uh, what he's done in regard to her position in the earth. The reality is he has blessed her. And whenever God chooses you over anybody else, I said whenever God chooses you over anybody else, to bless you, you ought to praise him and rejoice. Amen. And so God, somebody say, he never chose me over anybody else. Yes, he has. Come here, come here, come here. He woke you up this morning. There's somebody, amen, that didn't get up this morning. Help me somebody. Amen. I got a whole list. I got, I got a whole list of things that he did. He, would, he chose you. I said he chose you. He chose you to be on that job that you have. He could have chose somebody else. He chose you almost. You weren't the only applicant. I wish I had a witness up in here. In fact, there were probably some folks, amen, that were more qualified than you were. But he chose you. I, I, I don't mean to preach this long. And so Mary... Mary says, I sing, <laughs> I sing, I sing, amen, the song of joy, amen, because he chose me, he favored me, but, but not only does she sing, uh, a, amen, secondly, uh, this joy, because she sings, thirdly, she sings this joy, another reason, she spent most of her time in the next few verses, watch this, describing the way God is in general, watch this, she says, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. She, she says, she says, Amen. Let me just add another course to the song. She said, let, let me just tell you how God is. He's just this way. He's mighty. Then she goes on to verse 50 says, His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. And so let me just look at that word fear is a word of reverence. Right. Amen. Right. Those who reverence God. Amen. He extends mercy to those who reverence him. Anybody glad that you're a recipient of mercy? Praise God. Amen. Verse 51. He has performed mighty deeds with his arms. God, we ain't got time to deal with that. <laughs> Help me somebody. With his arms. You know what he does in, in, while, while he's in heaven, sitting at the right hand of God even now? Do you know what he does with his arms? Holding God back. Because when you mess up, God says, I told you. I'm, I'm, I, he said, listen, I told you, Jesus, they were going to mess up. I told, but, God, but Jesus stands there holding God back. The reason why some of us are still here, because his arms has held, has held God back. Do I have a witness here? When we went wrong, God says, that's enough. I'm bringing them home. Jesus says, give them another chance. <laughs> give them another day. With his arms, he's holding us back. Do I have a witness? He's in heaven holding back the rain. When the boss wanted to fire you, guess what? He, he's holding them back. Help me somebody. With his arms, he, he's holding them back. I wish I had a witness up in here. How many times have you looked at your life when you thought you just barely slipped by? You didn't slip by. It was God holding stuff back. 
on your behalf. Do I have a witness here? Why? Because he's merciful and he's kind. Amen. He just, that's his nature. My God. My God. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought low rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. Boy, that's what God will do. Amen. That's why you don't want to get too high and mighty. You know, you know what? The th a, throne, a throne is lifted above everybody else. And so you don't ever want to get to the point where you think you're above other folks. <laughs> the, the, the Bible says he brought down those, those rulers and, and those thrones. Do I have it? And then what he did, he took some humble folks <laughs> and he lifted them up. Are y'all with me here? Amen. I ain't got time. I ain't got time to really, amen, share with you what that really means to us. But when you look at life and how God will take an obscure person and somehow bring them into, amen, the center and focus of things and use them to make a difference in this world. That's what God will do. I said, that's what God will do. Well, I, I, I won't run the list. Let me close here. Mary, Mary was the first person who was asked to respond, amen, to the Christmas story. But how many know she wasn't the last? Somebody says she's not the last. So maybe our response is not like Mary, but if we're going to be a part of the Christmas story, we must express, amen, our joy, amen, for what God has done in our life. Why? Why? Because the Christmas story is a story of transformation. Let's just say transformation. And so listen, let me go back to my movies. And so when you look at most of the Christmas movies, amen, like the story of Ebenezer Scrooge, and how he was transform, transformed from a grumpy, hard-hearted miser to a generous and loving man. Amen. It's about transformation. She was singing a song of joy because Jesus was going to change the world. Are y'all with me here? Amen. It's about how he came to transform your, transform your life. In those movies I talked about earlier, the main character often goes through some sort of transformation. Amen. George Bailey finds hope again. The Grinch's heart grows three sizes. Charlie Brown learns what Christmas is all about. And the list goes on. And then when you think about it, as much as these are Christmas stories, they are also Advent stories. Because they talk about, amen, what is to come. Something is about to come. Something is coming. It's, it's all about getting ready for what is coming. And that's what Christmas is all about. We get ready for what is about to come. The joy and the hope and the peace and the love that's about to come. Amen. Tell somebody Christmas is about getting ready. It's about getting ready to express our joy. Advent is about our own transformation. Somebody say, amen, it's about getting ready. Somebody here ought to say, I know January is coming, but I'm going to get ready in December because transformation is coming. Do I have a witness here? I said transformation is coming. It, it's on its way. My life is going to be transformed and changed. Are y'all with me here? Amen. Y'all looking at me strange when we talk about transformation. What does that mean? Amen. Because to have a new way of walking. You got to have a new way of talking. You got to have a new way of singing. You got to have a new way of praying. A new way of preaching. Amen. Minister Greenfield, you got to have a new way of witnessing. Christians are supposed to transform the world. Amen. For the good of God, somebody, somebody ought to sing. And in other words, you can't create love in the world until you find love yourself. And love changes us. Every Christian movie knows this. Amen. It's about transformation, y'all. I said it's about transformation. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad today that I've been changed. I said I've been changed. No, not what I should be. But I'm not what I, I've been changed. I said I've been changed. Anybody been changed? 
Amen. My language has changed. Do I have a witness here? Amen. I said my language has changed. And maybe I'll talk about some of y'all, those of you that used to be cussers. Amen. Listen. Wife and I, wife, was, wife and I, wife and I was out to dinner on yesterday, sitting across from us. She may, maybe she didn't hear him. Across from us was, 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 was three individuals. They were eating, eating uh, amen, dinner. And one of the young ladies, young lady, nice, attractive young lady, she was talking. First of all, the first conversation started this way. What time are you going to church in the morning? What service are you going to? What's I believe I'm going to go to the 8 o'clock service. That's all wonderful Christian people. <clears throat> I did said that to myself. Wonderful Christian people, and 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 so we finished eating. By the time we had finished eating, Amen. I, I heard her saying MF. This. <laughs> I said, all of that attractiveness went out the window because of her language. You can't talk about, amen, having a relationship with Jesus one minute. Amen. Amen. And then you go cuss somebody out and use every expletive that you know of and some that haven't even been written haven't come up with amen and call yourself to have a witness a child of god no i've been changed since jesus came into my life i said i've been changed i i've i've, I've been changed i i've been changed well well i i i've got to leave y'all now that's enough for today I'm glad he changed me. She goes on and she talks about some things. Amen. And she says that he has a passion for the underdog. How do I know that? Because he, she mentions three things in verse 50. He has mercy for those who fear him. He has exalted those of low degree. And he's filled the hungry, amen, with good things. And so I'll stop by to tell you if you're an underdog. Jesus loves you. He's got your address. He has your number. Do I have a witness here? And so if I, if I were you, I would sing a song of joy. Amen. I said I would sing a song of joy. I would tell the world this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Do I have a witness here? I will sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. The Savior has come. Joy to the world. <laughs> the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room in heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Is there anybody here? <laughs> that has joy. Everyone standing. Sing a song of joy.